That's good. Aren't you glad we're on the victory side? Amen. Amen. 437 in your hymnal. 437. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sins. Let's all sin. I'm saved, saved, saved. Since the Savior found me, pardon all Save, saved. Aren't you glad? And uh, good to see you back in church tonight. Looking forward to a good service. And uh, let's pray together. Ask God to meet with us. All right. Father, we bow before you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we're saved. And we're saved by your grace and your mercy. And thank you for loving us, Lord. And thank you for a good service we enjoyed this morning. And you helped us and you spoke to our hearts. And I pray, God, now again this evening that you'd meet with us once again. Lord, I pray that Christ will be lifted up and that as we sing praises to you and we talk about Jesus and we think about him, that you will strengthen us and help us and build us up in the faith. Lord, that we can leave this place and go tell a lost and dying world about Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray you'll make this service exactly what you'd want it to be this evening and what you know that we need it to be. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Amen. Let's go to 341 in your hymnal. 341, I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory, victory in Jesus. Let's sing that first all together. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came.
Uh, we started doing that sold uh, RU style, we call it, and uh, just kind of carries over, doesn't it? Fits in there real nice, though. And uh, All right, we have a few announcements for us now. Um, I have a reminder here that uh, we need you to bring in the candy that we're going to pass out in the parade on the 17th, uh, just uh, assorted candy and such, probably not chocolate bars and things like that, because if it's a warm day, uh, that's not going to be so good, uh, but any kind of candy we pass out in the parade. We do it with the John and Romans and uh, give the kids some opportunity to, to throw some candy out, and uh, that goes good. You know, you... You, you put a little sugar with it, and uh, people are attracted to that. Amen? And uh, so they'll take the Gospel of Romans, if, uh, John and Romans, if we get a little sweetener with it, all right? And uh, so bring that in, would you? And uh, who do they bring this to? It says bring it in. Okay, bring it in to the ladies at the table, and uh, they'll take care of that. So uh, don't, don't forget about that. Just you're out, grab that and bring it with you, and then we'll, we'll collect that and have it ready for the 17th. We need lots of candy okay so uh help us out with that and we appreciate doing that and i still we, we need six dozen cookies when is this for for missions conference thursday friday saturday sunday friday okay six dozen cookies any preference of what kind something homemade not something you buy unless of course never mind but uh something you you get oreos anytime but uh you want some homemade cookies okay so uh who can take on uh, some cookies who get it cynthia how many you do three you do half of them need three dozen more who did brenda okay sandy okay you guys do some cookies and bring them in now where are they going to bring them bob Okay, bring them into the fellowship hall Friday of the conference, or Thursday night when you come to the conference. Bring them in Thursday night. That'll be fine. And then we'll try to protect them till Friday night, okay? And uh, so uh, we'll be fine. Yes, please, 333, it'd be great, okay? And uh, we'll take care of that. All right, now, uh, the schedule this week, of course, Wednesday night for the midweek service, 7 o'clock. Um, I believe... I'm going to start a, a series. I know we'll just have a couple Wednesdays for the conference, and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue. On, uh, I'm going to start a series. I, I spoke Friday night at Reformers Unanimous about some spiritual warfare, and I'm going to do the second part of that next Friday, but I thought, you know, that's something that I might uh, bring to the whole church and uh, deal with dealing with spiritual warfare. And so we're going to start that series, and uh, we'll do that starting Wednesday night, all right? Now, Wednesday night, we're going to need your help because uh, when the service is done, we have to clear this auditorium of all the chairs, okay? Uh, choir, uh, down here, everywhere. They're going to start tearing the carpet out Thursday morning and uh, start installing the new carpet. Then we will need some folks who can come, I'm going to say, uh, 1 o'clock on Saturday. Is that safe, do you think? And uh, I'm thinking 1 o'clock on Saturday. Now, here's the, the thing. I'm going to... I'm going to ask uh, Brother Bob to, to, to be here. Brother Bowman, remember he announced his Not For Sale conference on September 10th, that's Saturday, uh, over here in, in Columbus. And uh, he'd asked me to be a speaker at a couple of the breakout sessions. And so I'm scheduled at 3.30 and 5.30 uh, to speak there. They have a round table, something from noon to 2. And uh, so I'm going to be at that conference for most of the day and so I won't be here so uh, I need somebody to, to be in charge are you going to be able to be here yes. okay I'll be here but we need some folks who say all right well I'll come Saturday at one and help get the chairs set up in here and get everything put back together and get it ready for Sunday if many hands will make light work anybody be here at one and I think if it's one o'clock probably within an hour you'd have everything in and set up and ready to go back home Anybody can come on Saturday at 1 to do that. Brother Linderman, after soul winning, you just stick around. Gary, okay, two. We got some guys up here. Okay, there's five, six. Okay. You volunteered, David? All right. David, raise your hand. Okay, I see that hand. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Either volunteer or you get drafted. That's how it works. All right, good. Appreciate you helping with that, and uh, that'll be said. And remember now, uh, no food or drink in the auditorium uh, starting uh, when the new carpet comes, okay? And um, so just uh, 
Nothing at all. All right. Not only what? Yeah, candy's food. Yeah, candy's food. So we won't have that. All right. Okay. And then um, I think that's I think that's what we've got. All right. Let's take a minute and see if anybody's visiting with us tonight. Anybody here tonight for the first time? Looking to see. All right. Let's hear from the choir. Number 11, number 11, he is mine long before the fall of man. God designed a master plan. He is mine. He is mine. Let's sing that first and second together. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He exchanged the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left. anniversaries to celebrate 
and uh, Brian and Jacqueline Campbell. Anniversary was August 30th, right? It was that Tuesday? Good, good. Congratulations. Come on up here. We want to help you celebrate. And uh, you come. And, and the Barhams had their anniversary on the 29th, I believe. Uh, Heather's home with Elijah, not feeling well tonight. So we won't have Jason come up by himself or anything. But uh, we will give you some flowers to take home to your wife. How's that? All right. So we'll get our... Brother Parrish, he did volunteer to stand up here with Jason, but I didn't, he didn't think that was such a good idea, so we'll... Uh, <laughs> He'll get to bring flowers home to his bride anyway. And the Campbells, uh, let's see, this is anniversary number... Eight? Eight? Wonderful. That's great. Uh, what a blessing the Lord brought this family to us. And uh, that was all of the Lord, and uh, they've been such a joy, them and the the boys and little Serafina, and uh, we, we sure have come to appreciate you folks, and uh, happy anniversary to you. Let's sing for them, okay? Good. Let's go over to number 13. 13. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Let's all stand together as we sing number 13 together. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls. one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Needs dead like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter Supplying. Let's sing that last together. When we get to the chorus, we'll have uh, Lisa drop out. We'll sing that a cappella on that chorus. On that last together, every need is supplying. Plenty as grace he bestows. Every day my way gets brighter. seated. Ushers will come and we'll get our offering tonight. Give us God as blessed and prospered you this evening and appreciate your faithfulness in your giving. All right, we'll ask Brother Wallace to lead us in our prayer tonight for the offering, would you? I guess we need this. Let's pray. Father, we uh, certainly uh, are pleased to be in your house tonight. Lord, it has been a good day in your house. And Lord, the things that we learned from your word this morning, Lord, help us to um, hold on to those fast and to apply them to our lives and meditate upon the things that we were taught. And Father, as we come tonight and we open up your word, and, and Lord, we want to hear some more good stuff that, that would uh, just enhance our life to serve you and Give us a greater desire that when we walk out this door tonight, we, we totally want to serve you and to represent you. and Be good ambassadors for you. Lord, we ask that you would bless this uh, offering, and Lord, take every penny to glorify your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> To John 17, please. John 17 for our scripture reading. John chapter 17. We're going to read verses 5 through 17 of John chapter 17. Reading the verses responsibly as we normally do. 
And as we also normally do, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing pleased to read God's word and we'll begin together on verse number five. Ready? And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep them through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the scripture here this evening. And Father, I pray that you would prepare our hearts and that we each would be ready to hear what the Spirit would say to its church this evening. Lord, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you for each one of the folks who have made the effort to be here on a holiday weekend, on a Sunday evening service. Thank you for faithful people who love you and want to gather with the people of God. Now, Father, bless the special and prepare our hearts and speak to us as only you can. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When Jesus Christ, my Savior, prepared for Calvary's hill, he went into the garden and sought his Father's will. I read about his anguish and feel his sorrow there. I see him humbly kneeling and listen to his prayer. Not my will, but thine, Lord, lead me to come. Make my life a living sacrifice. 
Our Father, we bow before you in prayer as we come to the preaching of your word. I thank you tonight, Lord, for the word of God and how it's quick and it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, I pray that it would divide asunder tonight between the soul and the spirit, between what we want or what we think or what we feel and what you want and what you think and what you feel. And that, Lord, we will be able to have the mind of Christ this evening as we open up your word. Holy Spirit of God, be our teacher this evening. Help us to grasp the truth that you, I believe you prayed for, Lord Jesus, in John chapter 17. And help us to understand the relationship and uh, the truth between the church and the world. And Father, we'll thank you for what you'll do, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you, your Bible's open to John 17, this is Jesus' prayer for us. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting when we say it's Christ's prayer for us, um, the church. The church isn't mentioned here. In fact, more than half of the verses mention, uh, check this, Dean, this doesn't sound quite right to me. Um, you, the church isn't directly mentioned. We're mentioned. In fact, the world's mentioned more than we're mentioned. Uh, but without a doubt, uh, the church is referred to and we are referred to because we are the church. Uh, the, the, those who are saved, baptized believers, followers of Jesus Christ, are His body, the church. Now, the world, when it's mentioned in John 17, is... The, the world arrangement, the world system, as it were. The, the things that the world says are important. And, and by the way, you know what it is? Buying, selling, um, uh, marrying, giving in marriage, eating, drinking. That's, that's what's important to the world. Um, when, you know, you will, uh, every newscast, and uh, when you listen to news radio or anything like that, they always want to tell you whether stock market's up or down. They want to tell you this company's, their, their fourth quarter or third quarter earnings were lower than what they thought they'd be and this certain index is coming out this week and or this uh, company's advertising or uh, you need to get this or get that. It's all about buying, selling, eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage. That's what life's all about. And that's what the Lord said will be indicative of the world when He returns. They'll not be thinking about the things of God. They'll not be thinking about the return of Christ. They'll be caught up in just life. They'll be caught up to where uh, what we eat or, or, or who's playing or what game's on will be more important than the things of God. That'll be the important thing uh, to in the world. But the Bible makes it clear in 1 John 2 and verses 15 through 17 that we are not to love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so, and we understand, it doesn't mean that those things are not something that we have to do because we are in the world. And certainly we have to buy and sell and eat and drink, and we understand that. But there's a difference between doing those things and participating in those things and loving those things. And if we get to love those things, uh, especially and particularly more than we love God, then we're going down the wrong road. God makes it clear here there's two kingdoms, only two. There's the kingdom of God, God's kingdom, and there's the world's kingdom. Okay? God's kingdom and the world's kingdom. Everything in the world is in the world's kingdom except one thing. Hmm? The church. Everything in this world is in the world's kingdom. If, 
if, this, if the world's kingdom was his platform, everything here is in the world's kingdom. Okay? There's only one thing that isn't, and, and if I'm the church, I'm outside of the world's kingdom. You're in God's kingdom right now. That's why the Bible calls the church an ecclesia. What's an ecclesia? A called out assembly. Called out from where? The world. Called out from the world system, world's kingdom, into God's kingdom. Okay? And so, if, if you're uh, the church, then you're not in the world. You're called out of the world. Now, where do we live? We live in the world's kingdom, don't we? Where do we work? Work in the world's kingdom. Where do you buy and sell and, and eat? In, in the world's kingdom. That's why Jesus said, you're in the world and I'm not praying you take them out of the world. Uh, there's a reason for that and we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But if, if God calls us out of the world's kingdom, there's only one place for us to go. Church. It's the only place you got uh, between uh, any, any day of the week, any time of the uh, day of the week, if you're going to get out of the world, if you're going to get out of the world system, you have to come to His church. Otherwise, you're still in the world's kingdom. See, this is the place that we set our affection on things above and not the things of the earth. Not the things of this world. Colossians 3 and verse 1. So there's two places that, that, that you're, you're going to live and we're going to be. We're going to be in the world or in the church. In the called out assembly. And when God calls us out of the world, He calls us into the New Testament church. Understand that? Once you're saved and we're called out by Him for salvation, we're called to the New Testament church. When the, the folks got saved at Pentecost and they were baptized, the Bible says the Lord added unto them. Who's them? Yeah, the 120 that already met in the upper room. They were, they were the church at Jerusalem. The Lord added to the church. That's why when someone is saved and they follow the Lord in believers' baptism, they're added to them. That's us. Added to the church. And so you're saved and you're baptized and you're added to the church. So he, he and, and listen, it doesn't mean you don't study the Bible at home, for certainly you should. But that doesn't take the place of church. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't sing to the Lord at home. Hopefully, hopefully you do. And hopefully the neighbors don't complain. But, but you know what? It doesn't take the place of church. We, we live in a day when there's, there, there's less and less importance placed on the church. And the Bible says as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ, it ought to be more importance placed on the church, not less. So He calls us out of the world into His church. And then He sends us back out into the world. Why does He do that? Look at verse 21 of John 17. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Now here it is. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Why does God send us back out there? So we can, we can give them witness to the world that God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. We're going out there that they might know who God is and who His Son, Jesus Christ, is. That's why we're out there. We're out there to give the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's one of the purposes for the church. And that is the great commission of the church is to go and to give the gospel to every creature. And we, can't, we don't do that in the church, though the gospel can be preached in the church because I love to tell the story for those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And, and so it's, it never gets old and it never gets dry. We love to hear the story of salvation. And that's okay. But, the, but God, the, the church isn't primarily for lost people to come in and get saved. The, the plan was that we're here, and I'll say this in a moment, we're here to get strengthened and to get equipped. Why? So we go out there and win people to Christ. 
That's the plan, the New Testament pattern. So let me give you a, a few thoughts this evening from John 17. Number one, we come out of the world and into the church to get strength. We come out of the world and into the church to get strength. We come out of the church and go into the world that they might believe, receive Christ, and then they'll come into the church so they can be strengthened to where they can go out and tell someone how to believe and to believe on Christ and be strengthened in the faith. So we have the church and then to the world and then back to the church and then back out in the world and back into the church and back into the world. If you're, if you're not in church, then you're in the world. Those are the two kingdoms, remember? Note, look at John 17 and verse 5. Now, Father, glorify Thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Thou gavest them me out of the world. When you come to Christ as your Savior, and God says, you gave them me out of the world, then where's the only other place they, they, they can be? In the church. They have to be in the church. And so it, you can, listen, you can not smoke and not chew and not spit and not cuss and do all those things, but that doesn't mean you're spiritual. That doesn't mean that you're not worldly. Because you can still be in the world. That's why we say it takes three to thrive. Our Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Our four to four Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And, and that's not just some, oh, that's a cute little saying. No, that'll help you in your Christian life. Through the years, you know, uh, I, I, I think we, I, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to uh, sitting down with someone and having a Bible study or uh, what they call one-on-one -on -one discipling of a, of a new Christian. Not opposed to that. I am opposed to that if it takes the place of them being in church. What's the best thing you can teach a new Christian? Be in church. Come to church Sunday morning. Come to church Sunday night. Come to church Wednesday night. And if you'll see them plug in and catch that right away, they'll grow. They'll get it. The, 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 I've, I've watched it, observed it through the years. And the ones who get saved, and, and you bring them to church, and, and, and listen, when you, when, can I help you? When you get someone you lead to Christ, or you bring them to church, or they get saved, don't say, do you want to come next Sunday? Say, do you want to come back tonight? Get them in to have, hey, Sunday night church is great. Well, you'll love Sunday night. And sometimes you have to let them know, you know what? It's, it's different songs, a different sermon, it's a whole different service. Because sometimes, you know, they may come from a background to where it's just uh, the same service four or five times in a day. And so they may think we just have, you know, Sunday night mass like Sunday morning mass. And it's the same service, same sermon, same everything else. And uh, don't tell them it's the same sermon, pastor just changes the title, okay? Don't tell them that. But uh, you, 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 you want to get them back Sunday night. And then you want to say, okay, now we have Wednesday night Bible study. And boy, that's a great time. You ought to come Wednesday night and, and begin to get them understanding. This is, this is just normal. This is normal Christianity. And, and the best, I think the best follow-up and the best discipleship program is to get somebody in the church. And so many Christians, listen, many Christians don't love sin, but they love the world. They're not in love with sin, but they're in love with the world. And they'd rather be in the world than in the church. A lot of people tonight who, who aren't in church because they just had something they feel like was better to do than be in church. The Bible says, forsake, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. The assembling is the calling out of ourselves together. Calling out from the world. Again, we don't come to church to get the strength not to go out and curse or not to go out and party or not to go out and listen to the music of the world. We come to get strength 
to go tell them about Jesus. To go be witnesses in the world and give the gospel. Take the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I don't, I'm not saying you don't get strength not to do those things, but listen, why don't you do those things? Why don't we run with them, as Peter says, to the same excess of riot? You know why? You lose your testimony to tell them about Jesus. Lot did those things. And when it came time to tell his family about Jesus, how'd that go? Yeah, they, they, they laughed at him. Said, since, when, since when do you get religious? Since when are you serious about this Jesus thing? Man, you were just partying with us last week. What, what are you talking about? You, you lose your credibility. You lose your power of your witness. And so they won't listen to you tell them about Jesus Christ. So while some, listen, the church isn't here for entertainment. The church isn't here for just the enjoyment of its members. It's not a country club. Don't, don't think... Well, I'm a member here. I should get these. Members have privileges. Uh, that's if you belong to whatever. What is that? That's a commercial. Membership has its privileges. Who, who, who says that? Credit card company or something? Huh? Well, this ain't the credit card company. And, and the church isn't that way. What is the church? The church exists, friends, because it's to, it's to strengthen us in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And to build us up in the faith and our relationship with Him. Why? So we can go out into the world and tell others about Him. We're here on Sunday to gather strength and to, 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 to be strengthened in the faith so we can go leave this place and go back into the world and tell them about Jesus Christ. The church is for singing about Jesus and praising Jesus and preaching Jesus Christ. It's to help us look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's why the, he said in the church, he's to have the preeminence. Because Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will do what? Draw all men unto me. That includes you and me. And so the church is to be about Jesus Christ. And as we lift him up, we're drawn closer to him and we're strengthened uh, with all might and we're built up in the faith. And man, we leave church and we're ready to go. We're ready to tell somebody about Jesus. And so we want to go out and tell others about Him. So the church is here to strengthen us. Number two, Jesus prayed for the church. Do you notice verse 7? Jesus said, Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are thee, and I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them. I came out from them, from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now notice verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them that thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through, thy, through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. He's praying for us. He's praying for the church. Why, did he, why, did he, why does he pray for the church? Why is he praying for us? He's praying that, that we would, I think he's praying that we would get the message to the world. That we would get the message of salvation to a lost and dying world. He's going away and He gives us the Comforter. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And He told them in, in Jerusalem, you're going to receive power after that Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto Me. That's what you're going to get the power of the Holy Spirit for. Don't listen to people say, oh yeah, power of the Holy Spirit is you can speak in an unknown language. That's not Bible. You, you, you show me the power of the Holy Spirit by winning people to Jesus Christ. Show me the power of the Holy Spirit by giving the gospel to people and they listen to what you say. That's the power of God. Why? They got the message of Pentecost and they understood the power of the Holy Spirit and they gave the gospel that day and what happened? 3,000 people received Christ their Savior. Not just 3,000. 3,000 Jewish people got saved. They trusted Christ and got baptized. 
How'd that happen? Ten days of prayer. Ten days of prayer. Hmm? Jesus prayed for the church because he knew that he knew the church ought to be a place of prayer. How much do you pray? How much time do you spend praying for the church? Praying for one for another. Coming, coming out of the world doesn't just mean stop doing sinful things. It means get out of the world and get into church. I don't think there's any substitute for the church. Don't minimize the church. Don't take lightly the church. That's the one place that we're to go to if we're not in the world. Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. That's why we pray at church. I counted one time, I forget how many it added up to, but I think on, a, on any given Sunday, I think we pray 12 or 14 times in church. Why? My house ought to be called a house of prayer. It should be that way. There should be times when you look and somebody's huddled together with someone else and they're praying together. Instead of just talking about a need and, and if somebody says, hey, uh, I want you to pray about this, why don't you just get in the habit of saying, well, come here, let's, let's pray about it right now. And just bow your head and pray right there. I mean, to be honest, how many of you have ever been asked to pray for something and you said you would and then they went away and the week got going and everything got busy and you saw them about a week later and they said, boy, thanks for praying about that and your heart smites you because you say, I forgot all about it, really. Ever happened to you? The way to prevent that from happening is say, let me pray for you right now. I will, I will try to remember. So I carry three by five cards and I try to write it down and, and, and remember to look at that and, and add that to a prayer list. But, but listen, I want to make sure that I pray and the best way to do that is pray right away. But my house will be a house of prayer. We talked about this morning where the Lord told Israel, if they ever wandered away from God and got away from His commandments, He said, if my people which are called by my name, the first thing we talked about this morning was humble themselves, remember? And what happens when you humble yourself? What's the next thing that happens? You pray. Humble themselves and pray. What hap- you know what proud people don't do? Pray. You know why? I got this. I got this. That's pride. See, when you're humbled before God, you pray. And God desires that we pray. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Pray without ceasing. You see, prayer. So we find that the church is here and we come out of the world into the church to get strength. We find that Jesus prayed for the church. Let me give you statement number three. The church is in the world, but it is not of the world. The church is in the world, but it is not of the world. Verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. We are not in, we, we are in the world. Romans 12 says we're not to be conformed to the world. Right? Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12. So, I'm not to be conformed to the world. The word conformed means this. It means made to resemble, reduced to a likeness of, made agreeable to. So the message is, be not made to resemble the world, Christian, be not made to a likeness of the world. Christian, be not made agreeable to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not to resemble the world. We're not to be reduced to a likeness of the world. The great great testimony of a Christian is to live and behave and act like Jesus Christ. That's the goal. For us to be conformed to the image of His Son. 
Jesus Christ. That's what all of us are after. That takes courage and that takes strength in this present world. Where do we get that? Church. You get that at church. Jesus said in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. We're going to, God says, I, I, you're going to be, listen, we, we go from the church into the world, and we live in the world, but we're not of the world. Yet Jesus is praying we're kept from the evil, or the evil one of this world. And that's not going to happen if we never come out of the world and into the church. If all you do is stay in the world, you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. Some of you know that. Some of you have been saved. And in the course of your uh, years of being saved, you backslid, you got away from God. And what always happens when the, when the first time, when you begin to backslide, the first thing that drops off is you quit going to church. And if you're not in church, where are you? You're in the world. And you'll get weaker and weaker and weaker. You won't become stronger. Because this is where we're strengthened. This is where we feed the Spirit, not the flesh. This is where we feed the new nature, not the old nature. This is where we're around other people who love God. And want to serve God. And listen, those who, who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. But those who do love the Lord, well, they'll help you serve the Lord. So it's so important who you're going to hang around. If I bring, and that's why, listen, that's why we don't bring the world into the church. Then we're no longer called out of the world. We're still in the world. We defeat the whole purpose of being in the church. We can't uh, put those two kingdoms together. I defeat the purpose of the church when I do that. That's why you ought, to, you ought to be in church where everything is geared to the spirit and not to the flesh. All right? Let me give you statement number four. The church is set apart from the world. Look at John 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify means set apart. You, Jesus said, set them apart by the truth. And by the way, thy word is truth. That's why when you come to church, when you come into the Sunday school, what do we study? The Bible. When the morning service comes, what do we read together? The Bible. What do we preach from on Sunday? The Bible. We come back Sunday night. What do we open up and read? The Bible. What do we preach from? The Bible. When we come to Wednesday night service, what do we read together? The Bible. What do we study? The Bible. Why? Because this is His truth. And He sets us apart with His truth. You say, oh, Pastor, it's like that everywhere. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. There's a lot of things that go around and, and, and it's, it's psychology and it's, it's a positive um, motivational message. But it's not Bible. And so you come to church to get the Word of God. So we carry the Bible, we read the Bible, we study the Bible, we quote the Bible, we meditate on the Bible, we preach the Bible, we teach the Bible. That sets us apart from the world. It sanctifies us from the world. Church is important, folks. It's, in fact, it's vital to your Christian life. Well, that's you mean you can't be a Christian and can you be a Christian and not go to church? I suppose you could. Obviously, if you trust Christ as your Savior, you're saved. But a Christian who says he's a Christian and won't go to church is kind of like a, someone who says he's a doctor but doesn't have any patients. Or a lawyer that doesn't have any clients. Or a teacher that doesn't have any students. 
kind of doesn't make any sense, does it? You're not going to say, I love God and not love what God loves. God loves the church. And we need a revival in America. Oh, not among the world, in, in God's church. Of God's people loving the church of God. And making it the priority in their life. It's the only strength we get. So we have to come out, and if we come out from the world, we come into the church to be strengthened. That we might go back into the world to tell them about Jesus. Because see, if you're not faithful to church, there's only one place for you to go. That's the world. That's the world. Then you'll not only be then you'll not only be in the world, you'll be of the world. You'll be of the world. And God help us to be faithful to the church of God. Thank God. Thank God for the church. I thank God I was brought up in church. Don't, don't listen, parents. Don't listen to the lie of the devil that, well, you bring your kids up in church and you make them go. When they get older, they won't want to go. They'll rebel. That's a lie of the devil. There's numbers of people I'm looking at in this room. I know how they grew up. I knew they had to go to church. I knew their parents who made them go to church. And guess what? They're still in church tonight. And now they're grown up. And they're adults. They could make their own decision. They didn't have any mom or dad tell them tonight, you're going to church. No, they want to go. They want to be here. Bring your children up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. I just want to thank God for the church. And just wanted to explain a little bit uh, why, why we're the kind of church we are. That's why we don't bring the world's music in. That's why we're not, we don't entertain. I know occasionally, you know, somebody will clap for a special. That's why we don't clap at everything. I still like it. If you like what the preacher says, say amen. amen. If you like what he said, say praise the Lord. If you sing a song and you're blessed, hallelujah. If somebody sings, say amen. amen. But it's not going to be an entertainment where you're sitting there and, you know, clap for everybody. We, we get that, we get that uh, entertainment mentality. See, we're not, you're not spectators watching the show. Okay? And, and, and people begin to sing for applause. You have to be so careful. We're, we're not of the world. Okay? And we're come out of the world so we can be in church. So guard that, would you? Don't worry. That's why you say, well, when I miss a service or a couple services, then the pastor checks on me. Yeah, because uh, that's a concern. Because, you know, you, if you're not in church, where are you? In the world. And you can get weak real fast when you're in the world. Some of you, if you've ever been ill or you've had to miss several services and be out of church, you know what effect that has on you. It, it's hard. And so you realize that and you want to get back where you belong. Because this is where you get strength. This is where you set your affection on things above. This is where you're around the people of God. And this is where you get the courage. And this is where you leave church. And there's many times in my life I've left church on a Sunday night saying, man, bless God, I'm going to give the gospel to somebody this week. Man, I've got some tracks in my pocket. Man, I'm ready to go. Give me a squirt gun, I'll take on hell right now. You ever felt that way when you leave church? Man, you're ready to go. First person you see, you're ready to grab and say, come on, man, get saved. That's what church does. That's what it's for. And it's not, not of the world. It's the kingdom, God's kingdom. It's totally different from the world. Thank God for that. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, prayer that Jesus prayed in John 14. And, Lord, I want to thank you tonight for the church. It sure has been a, such a help in my life through the years. I'm thankful, Lord, we have a place we can come called out from the world where we can get strengthened where we can see Jesus lifted up. We can be drawn closer to Him, strengthened in our relationship with You, so we can go out and tell others about the Savior. We can go do the commission 
that you've given to each of us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. And Father, I pray that each of us tonight would realize how vital and how important the church is to our life. And that, Lord, you'll remind us of that when we think about just slacking off and missing a service because we're tired or we don't. We got to get up early or we got to do something else. Lord, remind us that when we're not in the church, we're in the world. And it'll hurt us. It'll weaken us. So help us to be faithful. Help us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. This evening, I wonder how many folks would say, Preacher, I believe God has spoken to my heart tonight about the importance of the church. And I just got a, I got a better understanding of the purpose of the church and how important it is that I make sure I'm in the church because if I'm not in the church, I'm in the world. Preacher, the Holy Spirit of God just tugged on my heart tonight and understand some things about how important church is. And Pastor, I appreciate if you pray for me this evening. Would you slip your hand up? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Back here. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. If you're here tonight and God has tugged at your heart, why don't you come and kneel to Him, kneel before Him and do business with God. If you're here tonight and you're saved and you're baptized, you ought to belong to a church. You ought to be part of a church. You ought to be serving in a church. You need the church. If God has spoken to your heart and you believe this is where God would have you serve, then you ought to come and say, I'm ready to be a part of the church. This is important. You do what God's bidding you to do this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight. Thank you for the church. Thank you, Lord, that you went back to heaven and you, before you left, you established your church. Lord, I pray that you help each of us to keep it a priority in our life and always remind ourselves we want to be in the in the we're in the church and when we're not in the church we're in the world but we're in the world to tell them about Jesus help us not to be of the world help us to always come faithfully to get strength and to grow in our relationship with you that we could go tell others about you have your way in this invitation now. May each person do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Quietly with your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening, will you? Oh, soul, are you right. weary and troubled? No light in the darkness That's right. you see. There's light for a look at the Savior And life more abundant and free Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in His wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace through death into life everlasting he passed and we follow him there over us sin no more hath dominion for more than conquerors we are turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace his word shall not fail you, he promised. 
believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation to tell turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the attention of everyone tonight. We want to thank you, Lord, for a good day in the house of God. Lord, we're reminded of Obadiah and your certain judgment on those who do not obey you as you, will, you judged Edom. Thankful, Lord, for the truth this morning that you break before using. And, Lord, we're willing to be broken that we might be used by you. And then, Lord, tonight, your church. We're thankful, Lord, that you've called us out of the world. And we have a place to come to called the church. It is out of the world. And, Lord, help us to make much of the church of God and the strength we receive when we come. May it always be a place where we turn our affection and turn our eyes upon Jesus. And we look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for decisions that have been made today for you. Now, Lord, send us forth from this place and send us out back into the world and help us take the message of the gospel with us. Lord, we know we, that you go with us, for you said, Lo, I am with you always. Lord, we have the Holy Spirit of promise. So I pray that you'll fill us and we'll have his power in our life this week. And Lord, we'll, we'll make opportunities and take opportunities to give the gospel everywhere we go. Give us souls to be saved, people to be reached for the glory of God. And we'll thank you for it now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Uh, Brother Linke, I need to see you for a few minutes after service. I know you probably got to get to work, but just give me a couple minutes if you would. And then I think I have Justin. I'm going to talk to him for just a few minutes. All right. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. Let's hear you sing. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go For it's a grand thing to be a soldier In his army here below It's the grandest thing to be a Christian It's the best thing I know God bless you, you're dismissed